morning everybody and welcome to another edition of our Not Cuts Cooking at Home videos. Today we're going to do something very close to my heart which is the great Sunday roast, doing a perfect Sunday roast. I've got a joint here which is a beautiful rib of beef. Um, there's three joints that I would suggest for roasting. This is a bone and roll rib of beef, so the centre of the rib. Um, a sirloin or potentially a top side. This has got a little bit of fat running through it. Lovely piece of meat. I've got 1.5 kilos here at the moment. I'm bringing it up to room temperature um, and this will serve uh, six people comfortably. Um, so what I'm going to do with this product is I'm going to use a baste on this to get some flavour through it and then I'm going to put it onto what's called a trivet. Now a trivet is this item here and it's the product that's got all our vegetables in there that's going to cook down to make our gravy. So in here I've got one leek, two carrots cut, one onion quartered, and a, and a head of garlic, so a bulb of garlic cut down as well. That also will effectively stop the, the meat roasting on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is drop our joint onto the product, bring it up here. And this is where I'm going to use my, my beef base. Now this is a mixture of soy sauce, bovril, so a tablespoon of soy sauce, a teaspoon of bovril, some salt, a little bit of salt, and some, some black pepper. What this will do, it will just give that real great flavor to the surface of the meat. So I'm just painting that on fairly liberally all over the product. Um, a lot of people don't do this, but when, you, when you're cooking a, a joint like this, this is a perfect way to start it. Now, if this had fat on the top of it, I would render the fat down by, by slicing through it and zigzag. So if you're using something like a sirloin, that's what you do, but I haven't got that on here. So I'm just going to, as you can see, just paint this onto it. This will also start to get the gravy working for us. Now what I've done with the oven is I've put the oven onto gas mark nine. It's a really hot temperature to get the oven really to seal this, this beef as we go. So I'm going to want, I want to get this meat to sort of medium rare, sort of between medium rare and medium. So I'm going to cook that for an hour. So this is now going straight into the oven on the middle shelf. Here it goes. Right, what I'm going to do now is we'll turn the oven down to around about 200 or about gas mark 6 and we'll leave, we'll leave that there. So my next product now is I'm going to do the Yorkshire pudding. So if you don't mind I'm just going to quickly wash my hands I need to and we'll get straight on with the Yorkshire puddings because these need some time to rest. So as we know making a perfect Yorkshire pudding is a really important thing to do. So hopefully I've got a recipe here that you're going to really like. So starting with four eggs, four eggs in the bowl, I'm going to add flour to this. Now we don't want to over whisk this but what I'm looking for is to get a smooth paste. So I'm going to start my eggs off in the bowl, four eggs, and into it goes the flour. So just slowly adding the flour in. You could sieve it in, but, but this is quite fine flour, as I did when I put it into the bowl. So what I'm looking for is sort of a thick paste. And rather than mixing the milk in at this stage, I, I find that this is the best way to get to the consistency I want. So this is going to be very rich. I'm, I'm looking at making six Yorkshire puddings with this. So as you can see, I'm getting that to a paste. I don't want to overwork the flour, so I'm working the flour at this stage. So, so there we go. Now, I will judge this a little bit like baking from the actual thickness of the batter when I add my milk. So the milk is here, and I've got just over half a pint of milk, but I'm just gonna work that till, it, till the batter comes to the consistency, which I know is right. So, I'm just working it through. Now, the way I know the batter is the right consistency is it should just coat my finger, but I should be able to see my finger through it. So that is the consistency I'm looking for, right there. So as you can see, I haven't put a great deal of milk into that. I'm just gonna put a little drop more. And there we go. So this will get really lovely rich Yorkshire. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that batter to rest and just before I take my roast beef out to rest I'm going to put the Yorkshire puddings in. 
So uh, that's the first stage of our uh, cooking. We'll come back and we'll have a look at our vegetables, our joint and our Yorkshire puddings uh, in a moment. Okay, back onto our uh, veg and potatoes for the perfect Sunday roast. One of the uh, mistakes we make is getting the wrong ingredient for making great roast potatoes. There's two potatoes for me that are the best for making roast potatoes. Desiree, red skin potatoes, or Maris Piper, white skin potatoes. Maris Piper are also fantastic for chips. There is a third one, King Edwards, but these for me are the two. So in my pan at the moment, boiling away, I've got a kilo of red skin potatoes that have been peeled and quartered into about five centimeters sort of, sort of shape. I'm, I'm pre-boiling those for about eight minutes and we're about there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strain the potatoes. So if I can come around there just to strain these, which is what I'm going to do. Right. They're getting strained there now. What I'm going to do is put the pan back on the heat so that is going to start heating. My potatoes are just starting to dry out a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to start to get the edges roughened up just a touch. So, potatoes go into the pan. At this stage, what you can do, I'm not going to do it today, but what you can do, you can add a little bit of flour into this mix as well. What I'm going to do now is with my potatoes in, I'm just going to give you a quick shake, so as you can see, they're starting, the edges are starting to just break up just a little bit. In here, I've got 100 grams of goose fat. Right, the goose fat of beef dripping works well. Goose fat is great because it's got a really high smoke point. So that, that goes in to our mix. We're going to start to just coat those and just shake them around a little bit. While we've got those in there, Plenty of black pepper and plenty of salt. What this, what this does better than the roasting tin, it actually coats my potatoes completely in that great fat. Right, now I've got the fat working as I want it. I'm going into my oven. I'm taking a hot roasting tin out and the potatoes are going to go straight into there. there Fabulous. So, Straight to top of our oven, and that's the top of the oven that we've got our beef cooking at uh, 200 degrees, gas mark six. 30 to 35 minutes for those potatoes, maybe 40. Let's come back and see how they cook up, and we'll finish them with the vegetables and potatoes, and obviously the roast joint. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Our next dish that we're going to do is cauliflower cheese. This is with a little bit of a twist. We're using uh, some spinach and some leeks in there. So. Starting with the pan I've got on the heat here, which is an anodized, so a really hard non-stick pan. I've got 150 grams of unsalted butter. Into that butter, I'm going to add 50 grams of leeks. So washed and thinly sliced leeks. This will give us some crunch and some texture into the, into the sauce, which is exactly what we want. As I mentioned, because it's a hard anodized pan, I'm absolutely fine using a whisk in this, and I'll need the whisk for the next stage, which is adding the flour. So 125 grams of plain flour going straight in. So that's going into the mix and uh, away we go. So what we're looking for is a real rapid heat through of the mix. So we're getting almost like a, a very loose roux. Now I don't want that to be too thick because I want it to be nice and velvety. If you get the roux too thick, what you'll find is you'll get lots of lumps. So that's the consistency I want. Now I've heated up three quarters of a litre of milk um, in a jug. Easiest way for me, you can do it in a saucepan, but I find the heating it up that way is the easiest. So I'm just gonna slowly add that in. As you can see, it's starting to thicken as we go. Just keep going with that, it's a little bit. So a third of the mix. The beauty about warming the milk is you can add more in at one time. So I'm just slowly working that through. And all the time, those leeks will be giving flavor to this sauce, which is, which is good. Okay. Again, we'll probably need two more lots to get to the consistency you want. So there we go again, and same principle. Now what we're also going to do is at the end of this cook, we're going to add some spinach to this sauce as well. And you'll also see, we're going to get a really nice, interesting textured finish on the top of it. So we're getting to our stage where we want to be now. 
and lock in. And I'm happy with the consistency I'm getting to now. I want it to coat the cauliflower, that's the important thing. It has to get to that stage where it coats the cauliflower. So, My need is just a little bit more milk into that. So just a touch more in. That's cooking away as you can see. Um, if I want it to be a little bit thinner than what it is, I'm going to add a little bit more milk to that. And while we're doing that, we're going to add our cheese. So 100 grams of cheese into our sauce. So that's going on. I'm just going to move off a little bit to, to combine the cheese. In fact, that will go through really, really well. So, our milk comes out, goes into the sauce. We're going to drop the heat down a little bit as well. So, and we'll add the rest of that milk. So, we've actually added that in there now. A litre of milk. We'll stir, stir back through. What I'm going to do with the sauce once it's the consistency I want is I'm going to put a little bit in the base of the holly cheese and a little bit on the top. So as you dig into the sauce, you get a really, that's really nice and silky and smooth now. That's where we want to be. Right, great. So I've got the sauce where I want it to be. Into my sauce. Goes my spinach. Now I don't really want to cook that. I just want to wilt it a little bit. And I'm also going to put in here now a teaspoon of English mustard. At this point, I'm going to turn the sauce off. And I'm just going to finally just stir that through. Oh, okay, absolutely fine. So let's just get that mustard mixed through. At this stage, plenty of salt and pepper going on. The cheese will flavour it, but we obviously we want more salt and more pepper going into that sauce as well. Right, okay, so that's the mix that we've got that we want now. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just grab a, uh, a small ladle and I'm going to put in the base of my serving spoon, a serving pot, sorry, just a small amount of that sauce. The cauliflower will then sit on top. So here's our cauliflower. This has been cooked for 10 minutes. So one large head of cauliflower, cooked for 10 minutes. And we just drop the florets on the top of the sauce, like this, all the way around. So you can see, as you dig through into that, you're gonna get a nice, coating of the, of the sauce with it as well. Right, more sauce on top, all the way around. I'll be generous with the sauce because it's really important that this is cauliflower cheese. And to make it even more special, what we're going to do is, let's get plenty of that spinach on there, is we're going to put this mix together to go on top. So this is, Panko breadcrumbs, 15 grams, 50 grams of cheddar, five grams of paprika, and a little bit of extra parmesan. So I'm mixing that together, and that's gonna go straight on the top. What this does, it'll give it color, texture, a little bit of crunch, and also, it will look fab when it comes out of the, um, when it comes out of the oven as well. So this will be enough for six people. There we go. Perfect. That's ready to go in the oven. Thank you very much.